Welcome to all of you. Um, I am very uh, thankful for the invitation and I hope uh, that I can give you something which you don't know already. Um, uh, uh, you, you don't know me, but what is worse, uh, you, I don't know you, you and I don't know how much you know about the philosophy of history, which is a special field of my of my work, um, and especially the history of the future, which is a special field of historiography, which has developed uh, within the last 20 years, more and more of within the last half of a century. Uh, and I would like to give you some insights to that. But I start with something which perhaps is more familiar to you. Uh, and um, that is uh, the, 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 the concept of progress. Um, as uh, you all know, there is a kind of uh, crisis for, the, for, for this concept. And I think it is one example where we feel very much how much um, uh, concepts of time have uh, an impact on our, uh, on our life. Um, so it may perhaps help a little bit um, in this, uh, uh, in this crisis of the, pro of the concept to be aware how it came to be um, uh, an important concept for modern societies. Um, and um, I, I, I would like to point to some, uh, to, to some points uh, in the development of this, uh, pro, uh, of this concept in modern times. Um, uh, to start with, uh, uh, with many origins of the concept uh, progress, uh, I would like to, um, uh, to, 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 to have a look to the situation before modern times, let's say in the late Middle Ages, where um, we can see that new inventions, uh, let's say, the, the pendulum clock or gunpowder or um, uh, other inventions, technical inventions, were um, not even recognized or not even um, is, uh, taken as something important for mankind uh, by the contemporaries. We uh, even don't know uh, uh, who were the inventors, uh, very different from uh, uh, important inventions in our time. Uh, so uh, uh, to, to do things in a different way was seen uh, rather as something irritating. Um, uh, destabilization of the uh, traditional order, which uh, was seen more as a danger than, an, uh, than as a chance. Um, so that is something which is really new, uh, starting from, uh, let's say, uh, the, the uh, 16th, 17th century. Um, and uh, as you may know from the history of ideas, uh, one uh, uh, another step to the progress, to the to the progress, or the to the importance of the concept progress. Uh, was the so-called querelle des anciens et modernes. Um, that is a discussion uh, mainly among French um, uh, people, uh, uh, scholars, who uh, quarreled about the question whether uh, the uh, whether modern times uh, could be better than um, uh, ancient times. Uh, there was a, 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 a strong um, idea that the that the the Greeks and Romans were uh, the the top of civilization, and the discussion was: is it uh, is it possible uh, to go uh, further to, than they had been in a long time ago? And um, the, the one sa side said, well, no, uh, that is not possible. We can just uh, come to the same level as they had been. And, um, but uh, others said, well, no, it, it, is, uh, it is true that we, uh, that we cannot surpass them, but we are perhaps uh, dwarfs, but we are uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. So that may be a, a chance to, to go ahead. So that is a discussion of the late uh, 17th century, uh, which is uh, taken as a starting point for the 
for the career of, of, the, of the concept of progress. Um, what is very a basic uh, uh, factum now um, in, in uh, the 17th and 18th century is that the whole um, uh, idea of history has changed in that time. And the most remarkable fact I think is that up to that time, um, the end of the world was seen very near. What is near perhaps within the, the, this or the next generation, uh, most people thought that the, that the end, Christian people thought that, the, uh, that the, uh, the world would come to an end. But uh, then uh, uh, there were several arguments that this could not be really true um, uh, because uh, um, uh, up to that time, the idea was that the world would last uh, about uh, 6,000 years, um, uh, starting about 4,000 before Christ and coming to an end 2,000 um, uh, after um, the, the birth of the uh, of, of Christ. Uh, but now one found, um, for instance, uh, that um, there were revolutions of the of the earth uh, um, that which were uh, much older. Uh, for instance, uh, the phenomenon that people found shells on the top of mountains, and uh, the explanation was very rational and clear that these um, uh, regions uh, would have had to be uh, uh, under the under underwater um, uh, in in former times, but that uh, uh, they people argued um, could have not have been in in remembered time in time in historical time. So it must be it must have been much longer than the four thousand years where we have records from. Uh, but if the 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 Earth was much older than one had thought before, there was no reason why it shouldn't uh, come to an end very soon. So the whole idea of the 6,000 years uh, uh, collapsed in a way, um, and uh, a time began, uh, a modern time, where the people had a long-term uh, expectation of the world, uh, of things to come. Um, uh, and then uh, a last uh, argument uh, at that time was also um, that history was taken as a, as a history of salvation. That means that the realm of God would be uh, the goal of a, of a, of a development uh, of, uh, of mankind, which uh, uh, in, implied uh, a kind of temporalization of all things uh, which were that the people went step by step to a uh, to a final goal which is the the realm of god so that is the religious um, uh, uh, analogy to to the uh, secular concept of uh, progress so uh, I, I i'm very short uh, in all this um, because uh, the time is short and i would like to uh, to give you um is uh, just an overview uh, of the history so uh, the next thing is uh, the, the the period of the career and crisis um, uh, the 18th century as you may know has been uh, uh, the, the uh, an age uh, for the uh, conceptualization of uh, of history, uh, not only the concept of history itself, uh, that means not history of, of I don't know, uh, a certain kingdom or uh, something else, but history as such was an invention of the 18th century. And so were, were all the, 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 the time concepts uh, uh, also, for instance, the concept of past, the concept of present and of future, they were all invented at that time. That is, an, uh, that is a sign for, um, for, for something new, that there was an idea of uh, an entity called history. Um, but uh, at the same uh, time, uh, it began already that um, history, uh, being seen as a, as a progress in time was uh, uh, 
was spelled in a different way. Uh, what the goal of history would be uh, was a, a question of, uh, of discussion uh, and uh, some thought of a liberal uh, state or the liberal society of free individuals, others thought, began to think of a, com a socialist uh, uh, communist society in the 19th century and other concepts uh, uh, came up uh, as well uh, in, uh, in the course of the 19th century. But at the same time already, uh, the, the crisis of this concept began uh, because uh, uh, people realized that indeed there were a lot of technical progresses, but uh, the, the moral, moral progress, which was uh, a, a core idea of the Enlightenment, uh, was re not really uh, developing. Um, uh, so the, uh, perhaps even a kind of moral decline was uh, diagnosed at the end of the 19th century in many, um, in many uh, books of the time. And this, of course, continued uh, throughout the, uh, the 20th century, um, especially uh, the dehumanization of warfare during the First World War, the coming up of uh, genocides, and finally, the break of civilization, as uh, uh, Dandina has called it, in the Second World War, uh, um, uh, well, uh, made the, 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 uh, the, 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 the concept of moral progress um, less um, convincing. I mean, there was already uh, in the 19th century uh, 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 the argument that the progress was uh, split in a way, um, whereas the, the progress of, uh, of uh, capitalism, uh, well, uh, was, uh, was good for the bourgeoisie. Uh, on the other side, uh, it was uh, a time of alienation and impoverishment uh, for uh, the poorer uh, ranks of society. And um, as we all know, throughout the 20th century, uh, the new risks of life came up, um, the, the contamination of the environment, of uh, the, the dangers of nuclear power, uh, the climate um, uh, uh, crisis, and uh, today new diseases are all uh, uh, clear um, indicators for uh, the, the, the ambival ambivalence of progress. So what a new kind of thinking has taken, um, uh, has, has been introduced uh, uh, that is more uh, cyclical, recycling, economy, ecological equilibrium, and all these kind of concepts are um, uh, bringing uh, the, 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 the idea of progress uh, not to an end, but um, it is today a question how the future will be. Um, I think we all uh, think not only, not, uh, not anymore in terms of a general progress of mankind, but rather in terms of a limited progresses on certain fields. And we are very aware of the many dangers which are uh, included in, 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 uh, in progress uh, on certain fields. Um, so that is a, a new kind of uh, thinking and awareness for the dangers of progress. Um, well, uh, this is why my, my, my first point. Um, my second point uh, would be um, the, the idea of, the, of a plurality of times. Uh, that is a new discussion which um, came up uh, in the last uh, years and which I would like to introduce to you a little bit more. Uh, but uh, again, I have to go back to the 18th century where uh, the, the, the concepts of time uh, uh, took uh, its, its modern shape in a way. Uh, and I see it um, uh, uh, at that time, we find two kinds of, uh, two, two, two concepts of time. One which uh, you all probably know, that is the, the, the concept of, of an entity, um, uh, all uh, including time which was uh, 
developed by Isaac Newton in the end of the uh, 17th century and then popularized uh, in a way also uh, by Immanuel Kant um, uh, in, in, in a certain way. Uh, but at the same time, we had op opponent, uh, opponents to this, this concept of empty time, which I call um, uh, uh, those who, who argued for, uh, for an embodied time. What is embodied time? It is the idea that time is not something absolute, um, and uh, there, that there is a, a world uh, thinkable which uh, where no things are, no events are in, but uh, still time and space are uh, the, uh, the, the, the basic dimensions of the world and of reality. Uh, this was the idea of, um, of uh, uh, Kant and, uh, and Newton, but uh, Leibniz already argued in the, in the early 17th century that time rather has to be seen as a quality of things, so it cannot be, um, uh, cannot be taken from the, the events uh, which are only if people, if, uh, sorry, if events are in re relation to one another, you can speak of a, of a time which is a relational term for him. And um, uh, others took up uh, this idea, most important, uh, uh, Herder, uh, uh, and um, so there in, in, in historiography, we find a kind of combination. Historians up till our time um, uh, uh, are based on, on two ideas of historical time, which one which is the absolute empty time represented uh, by the calendar. Um, and on the other hand, we have, have a lot of relational uh, embodied time concepts. Uh, for instance, uh, I mean, this can be uh, a concept life like uh, um, uh, an epochal uh, renaissance or uh, humanism or whatever you take. Uh, it can also be um, a concept of a people which has a starting point and then a time of, uh, of rise and decline and many other uh, historical objects or subjects have their history. So this idea that time is something which is attached and included to, or is only relational in, in, in the objects uh, historians uh, um, are concerned with, uh, this is something which has became more and more popular uh, in, in the 19th and 20th century. Um, I would even speak of a kind of time revolution in the 20th century, because we can find that in many, many, um, uh, in many fields of, uh, of uh, research and of knowledge, uh, we, we, wor we work with um, embodied times concepts. Uh, most uh, important and famous is Einstein's uh, theory of relativity, where the point of course is that, um, uh, that time is relational. Uh, but we find it in many other uh, fields as well, just to give some examples in uh, economic history, where the uh, Kondratiev uh, cycles uh, were developed in the 20s, in the 1920s. Um, the, the, the biological cycles, as you know, uh, uh, bio biologists uh, speak of um, the, that, for instance, uh, human beings or animals have their own time, which is not exactly the same time as um, day and night, uh, the 24 hour circle um, of the day. And uh, then to come to the most important for historians is the idea of layers of time, Zeitschichten in Germany. That is a, um, is a concept which has been developed by the, the, the French historian um, uh, Fernand Brodel in the uh, 1940s and 50s, where he tried to bring together the, the very different uh, fields of, uh, of sociology, psychology, and many other um, uh, fields of uh, 
uh, human research. And uh, just by a kind of theory of time, he said, well, we can, we can find in time a kind of common ground because all these uh, subjects differ mainly in how they deal with time. So that was the basic idea. And so he made his, um, his famous uh, concept of three layers of time where you have uh, on the top uh, the, the, the level of uh, Histoire et Venimentielle, the, the Ereignisgeschichte, uh, which is very short uh, uh, in, in change. Then you have the uh, economic history where you have conjunctures uh, and the, the rise and decline of classes, which takes uh, decades and sometimes even uh, uh, more. And then you have the, the Histoire du, uh, Long Durée, uh, where you have the change uh, almost not, uh, cannot be seen of landscapes, of languages, which take for that, cha for that change uh, hundreds of years. So uh, this idea of, a, of a, a theory of historical time was taken up by the German historians Reinhard Koselig in the uh, 1960s and 70s, and he tried to give history uh, a kind of theoretical uh, background or uh, yeah, uh, theory uh, where he uh, where he tried to to find the 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 essence uh, of the of 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 history in in uh, its uh, time structure. Uh, but uh, as uh, as he he never succeeded in build up uh, a coherent theory of historical times, I think one could say that this um, uh, attempt failed so uh, uh, failed so far, because uh, the the concepts of time which he uh, he demonstrated to to be existent. Uh, were too different uh, to be uh, taken into one uh, theory. So uh, we come to that point, which today uh, is a, a, a discussion uh, that we uh, in history are confronted with a plural, plurality of times, uh, especially um, Achim Landwehr is one of those who, who argue for this, but uh, it is uh, developed by many other people as well in other countries. Uh, what does he mean by a plurality of times? I mean, he, he speaks of, of times in, in, in terms, let's say, of, of past, present, and future, but uh, also of timelessness or of time rupture, of progress, of acceleration. Uh, but the, his main point, I think, is that he says there is no general uh, idea of time anymore, what Newton called the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the pure uh, uh, time um, or the empty time, uh, which can be taken as a common framework for all these, um, uh, for all these time concepts. So we live in a kind of uh, incoherent world where people follow different concepts of time and uh, the question now is open where do all these uh, time concepts meet i mean the problem i think is not so theoretical as one might think uh, everybody of us who has a child and uh, uh, he works at the university for instance he knows that problem that uh, we have to manage different uh, time concepts when our child has to be taken from the kindergarten it in the afternoon, but at the same time, we have a meeting at the university. So different time concepts come together, they clash, and it is a problem how to manage to, to bring them together. So that is a very practical example for, for the problems we have in society today, dealing with different time concepts. So far, I think we have a discussion afterwards, uh, but I go to the 
the third part now, which um, comes more to what I myself have done I, in, in writing a, a history of the future. Um, uh, of course, this is not the, 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 the coming time uh, where we don't know much about, but rather uh, the, uh, the future past. Uh, uh, and uh, to, to, this is a very interesting story, um, how the concept of future or the ideas what the future would bring uh, was uh, changing uh, all over uh, time in the last centuries. Um, uh, again, uh, to, to begin with, we have to go back to the, to the early modern times, uh, 17th, 18th century, when the concept of history uh, was emerging and the extension of the horizon of time uh, um, was, um, was, uh, was, could be seen. Um, that is uh, something uh, which uh, I, I cannot go into that, but uh, if, we, if one says that a concept or the idea of a future is something modern, developed in the, uh, in the 18th century, of course, the, the question comes up, uh, was, wasn't there a future before? I mean, uh, uh, we are the future of, the, of people living in the Middle Ages, so there must have been a future. So that is a big discussion. What do I mean when I say the, the, the future was invented in the 17th and 18th century? But I let it, this open perhaps for discussion and I want to come to my uh, observation of four or even five cycles of, uh, of uh, uh, the future. Uh, what I, do I mean by cycle? Uh, it is the observation that, the, uh, the, uh, that societies in, in, in Europe uh, at least didn't continuously care for the future in the same way. There was where periods of time where uh, people were very optimistic and enthusiastic about the future. And then uh, there the followed times when they were very disappointed uh, about the future. And this was a coming and going, uh, a rise and decline of, uh, so this is uh, what I call the, the cycles. And there are at least can be seen uh, four cycles, the first cycle, which I call the philosophical cycle um, uh, in uh, the uh, around starting around 1770, uh, where the uh, the term uh, uh, the future was invented, and uh, uh, to make it a little bit more concrete, um, uh, comparing uh, the in theology uh, what people thought about the future. Uh, or theologian thought about the future was changing very much. Uh, I think uh, the pietist uh, Spener, August Spener, was the, one of the first in the end of the 17th century who argued uh, not any more as Luther and others had done that they prayed God, uh, that they prayed to God that that the 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 world would come to an end very very soon. Uh, he rather said, "Well, there is a chance if we live uh, longer than uh, let's say the the next generation, there's more more time for um, you know, for uh, getting better, so that mankind will not." Uh, come to the last judgment just in their sins, but they have a, a chance to improve in the meantime. And others uh, followed this line that of the extension of the future. For instance, the English um, uh, theologian Joseph Butler, and uh, again, uh, after him, uh, the German uh, Joachim Spalding, they argued, well, uh, uh, since God um, created, can create only perfect things, uh, but we see that man is not perfect uh, even when he dies. Um, well, this cannot be the end. So they said, well, there must be a time after the, after the death where people improve and perhaps uh, we live only the first hundred years of our life on this world, but after that, there will be ha perhaps be uh, 10,000 years where people are uh, able to improve their character and uh, becoming uh, good people. 
So this is the, uh, still a kind of theological uh, discussion, but then uh, there was a kind of secularization of the whole discussion. And we find a lot of um, people, uh, scholars who argue um, on the basis of an expectation uh, that time would last uh, for quite a long time. Uh, for instance, uh, Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations um, uh, is based on the idea that a kind of progress of economy could be uh, uh, established by division of labor, but all that took a lot of time for him. This could not be done within uh, uh, the, the next generation or so. And others uh, had the same idea, Lessing, Kant, uh, uh, also uh, the French uh, philosopher Condorcet, they all argued for a, uh, for a history, of, for development of mankind in history, which would last uh, at least uh, thousands of years. So uh, this, to make it short, this is the first uh, uh, period of time where uh, um, a future concern can be observed mainly in, in, um, among philosophers and theologians. Then we've, uh, we have a time of the romantic period where people turned ra rather uh, more to the past, uh, as you may know, and only in the 1830s, we find a new uh, wave of future concerned in uh, modern societies. Uh, most uh, uh, well known are the, uh, the socialists, uh, Robert Owen, Saint-Simon Fourier. They all uh, argued for a new society, a better society, um, and they, uh, the, 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 uh, the tool for improvement was, uh, in political terms, uh, democracy. So uh, democracy was a, a kind of future concept to, to make uh, uh, society and mankind better. And uh, uh, this is also the time when the, uh, the, the big uh, utopian concepts of a future socialist societies, a society came up, um, a big discussion uh, which went on through the century. Um, uh, and uh, this is the, the, the second cycle of uh, the democratic cycle of the 1830s. The third is perhaps the most important uh, following the years after 1890, uh, when um, the, 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 the future orientation of society spread through all fields of society. Um, we find a lot of, uh, let's say, journals who, uh, who, who were called the new century or uh, something of this kind, uh, the future or whatever. Um, we find a lot of new utopian novels at that time discussing the problems of the future, mainly around 2000, uh, 100 years uh, following the, that time. Um, and all kinds of uh, more practical uh, uh, fields of, uh, of future research uh, where um, could be observed, let's say, in, in uh, even in economy, uh, we find the first industrial um, companies here who install um, groups of uh, researchers uh, which uh, didn't develop uh, new inventions for the present, but rather for the future. In a way, utopian projects uh, like the domestication of blizzards uh, and other things of that kind. So that is a clear um, uh, indication for a kind of future orientation in economy. Um, and of course, we have a lot of concept of a new man, of a new society, um, uh, which has been discussed uh, before and after the First World War. In uh, perhaps most important for, for you, uh, maybe, that in, in the arts, in, in all the arts, uh, we find a kind of new uh, language, uh, a future language, uh, uh, let's say abstract painting um, uh, or uh, the 12-tone music. 
uh, and in architecture, as you know, um, uh, functionalism. Uh, these were um, languages, I would say, which uh, uh, were new in a way um, that they were not only uh, newly invented, but rather that they were they intended to uh, to depict or to to paint a, a, a new so, a future society, and uh, this can be seen uh, very much in the new um, architectural design, where we have, for instance. Um, the streamlined car, where, uh, which is, uh, has been seen as a, a clear um, a indication for, uh, 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 for future objects. A car which was uh, uh, built in that way uh, had a promise in, in it that uh, this could be, uh, could be uh, driven even in 50 years or so, something that what you buy in that way is something which is uh, uh, which will survive uh, the coming time. Uh, but uh, at the same time, already around the First World War, there was a new experience that uh, um, that the that this new kind of future orientation included also implied also uh, uh, bad things. Uh, the, the big destructions of the First World War and uh, even more of the uh, 20s, 30s, 40s, um, they were all based on the idea that uh, the, the new society, the future society uh, had to, had his, um, his losses, uh, his, that for instance, uh, the, the people were, um, were driven to, to destroy their present uh, cities and urban uh, environments in order to build up a future world, a future society. So this kind of to, to make way for, for the future included also uh, that the present state of affairs should be uh, destroyed. So uh, this was uh, one of the big uh, dangers of the 20s and 30s uh, and uh, it was um, it was responsible uh, for a lot of warfare crimes for the suppression of men and even of um, the criminal uh, acts like Hiroshima so this is a, a time after the first, second world war in western europe there was a kind of hesitation, uh, a kind of um, uh, that people thought, well, it is not go good to think too far uh, into the future. We have to be careful. We have to think more in, in, in short terms. Um, so for, for, for the next generation, not for, for long, for a thousand years uh, as the Nazis and uh, even uh, the the socialist, uh, socialist uh, governments had done. But as you may remember, uh, there was a fourth cycle in from the uh, 50s and 60s, um, uh, which I call the futuristic uh, cycle, new technologies, um, uh, cyber, uh, uh, cybernetics, um, uh, new inventions like computer, uh, even a kind of future research, future futuralismus uh, was, uh, uh, was uh, uh, a big uh, idea of the 60s. Um, and, but this was rather a short cycle because already in the early 70s, we find a reaction um, in, uh, as much in, in, in the public, uh, in public uh, uh, reactions, uh, books and so uh, journals, but also in, in nature. Uh, it is uh, the, the beginning of a period of crisis uh, of nature, of the environment, you know, um, the, uh, the big, um, uh, the big uh, I, uh, work, The Limits of Growth, uh, this book of 70, uh, 1972, which had a big, uh, it was a turning point for, for, the, for, for a lot of people. 
And of course, uh, this is going on even today. The climate crisis uh, shows uh, to us uh, how, uh, uh, how dangerous or how dark the future can be seen. So uh, as you may see, uh, uh, looking through all these cycles, um, they, they, are, they follow more or less in, a, uh, in periods of 60 years or two generations um, from the 1770s, 1830s, 1890s and uh, 1950s. Um, and uh, if we would take this as a law of history, one would have to think of uh, the 1920s, that is our time, as, in, as a time where a new fifth cycle would uh, start. And I, I leave it to your own uh, judgment whether this is really um, the beginning of a new wave, a new cycle uh, at the moment. Well, I, I would like to, uh, to, to proceed and to, to come to an end. Um, the dangers of the concept of the future are big. Uh, and um, I, I perhaps will not go into that uh, to, to, uh, to save the time. But uh, perhaps to, as a, for, for the end, I would like uh, to make a, a more general uh, remark uh, on, um, for, the, for the historiography um, of the future. Um, that is, uh, I, I, first I, I, I have uh, collected here some uh, books which have uh, tried to, uh, to describe this history, um, but um, uh, we have today a lot of theoretical um, instruments uh, for, um, for the uh, investigation of the future um, of the future. Besides the future's past, which I described you already, uh, we, we have also today the idea, uh, the reverse concept of the past future, uh, that is um, uh, the, the, that, in, that we look not to the past to, 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 uh, to find out what uh, the past people thought of their future, but rather we look to the future uh, in order to, uh, to think of how they may uh, look back to our time. So that is the reverse operation. And uh, both are uh, uh, today basic concepts for a, a, concept, a new, new kind of uh, historiography, um, which I uh, will not go too much to, into. But what is uh, the, the direction of this historiography is that we perhaps uh, should include more uh, of the virtual realities, that is the, those futures in the past which have not been realized. Uh, as you know, um, the history of the future uh, lives from the idea that things which has been seen as coming have not come uh, uh, in fact. But these were realities which are not really um, gone away but they are in a way uh, uh, present even today. Think of, of socialism. This is an uh, historical idea, which today perhaps is not very popular uh, from the uh, 1990s onwards, but uh, uh, we are not sure that it will not come again. So uh, the past futures are not really um, uh, gone, and, uh, but rather they are still present in our own uh, present uh, time and it will come, it may come up in the future again. So this has to be included, that is the basic idea of a virtual history. And I would like to go to, uh, yes, uh, that is the end of my presentation. Thank mm -hmm. you.